Today, Celsius picks a bidder to help the firm exit bankruptcy. Terra co-founder Do Kwan gets his bail revoked in Montenegro. Nary Redboard of TRM Labs explains why crypto hacks fell by 70% in Q1 of 2023. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Jordan Smith. The crypto market is mostly flat this morning after that broad sell-off yesterday, with Bitcoin hovering at the low end of the $26,000 level. Ether, meanwhile, trading just under $1,800, and Solana rose slightly, trading around $19.25 by noon Eastern. Investors are still trying to make sense of what a U.S. government default would mean for crypto. That's as the June 1st debt ceiling deadline quickly approaches without a deal between Republicans and Democrats in Washington. The CEO of Blockchain.com spoke at the Qatar Economic Forum and said a default would spur an immediate pullback in crypto prices before a, quote, push upward thereafter. All right, let's talk about the headlines. Today, Celsius chose Fahrenheit's bid to acquire the assets of the bankrupt crypto lender following a long auction process. Fahrenheit is a consortium which includes blockchain-based VC firm Arrington Capital and minor U.S. Bitcoin. A Coinbase spokesperson confirmed to us that the crypto company will be a service provider to Fahrenheit. Court filings show that the group will acquire the crypto lender's institutional loan portfolio, mining unit, as well as the private equity and venture capital investments. Reuters reported today that Celsius said Fahrenheit will provide the capital, management team, and technology to establish and operate the new company. Fahrenheit must now pay a deposit of $10 million within three days. Celsius filed for bankruptcy protection back in July. Next, we have an update for Doquan for you. The Terraform Labs co-founder will remain in detention in Montenegro, even though a request for bail was initially approved. According to a statement from the basic court in the capital of Montenegro released today, the decision to accept the 400,000 euro bail for Doquan has now been revoked as determined by the higher court in the city, and his detention was extended. Doquan faces charges in Montenegro for falsifying official documents and is scheduled for his next hearing on June 16th. The U.S. and South Korea have requested Kwan's extradition to face criminal charges related to the collapse of Terraform Labs last year, but Do Kwan must go through his legal proceedings in Montenegro first. Last, during a glitchy Twitter space with Elon Musk yesterday, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis talked crypto and central bank digital currencies. Specifically, he pledged to oppose anti-Bitcoin legislation in Congress and stressed his opposition to CBDCs. DeSantis, who launched his 2024 presidential bid on Twitter yesterday, said during the Twitter space with Musk that as president, he would protect Bitcoin. He also argued that the cryptocurrency represents a threat to the current regime, and so they are, quote, trying to regulate it out of existence. Earlier this month, DeSantis signed legislation prohibiting the use of CBDCs within Florida. All right, on to our main story. TRM Labs is out with a new report this week showing that crypto hacks have evaporated in the first quarter of this year, despite the record-breaking number of hacks last year. To find out more, I spoke with TRM's Ari Redboard to have him break down the data. All right, Ari, let's start with the top line here. Hacks are down something like 70% year over year in the first quarter of 2023, about $400 million stolen. And that's not a small number, but what's changed between this year and last year? Where have the hackers gone? Yeah, no, it's really interesting. And, and, and Jordan, thank you so much for having me. Uh, look, uh, there's very rarely good news when it comes to crypto hacks. Um, but according to TRM, we've really seen a 70% decrease in uh, hacks from this time last year. So you mentioned 400 million, which is, is still a lot of money, but what we've seen is about 400 million stolen across about 40 different crypto attacks in the first three months of 2023. That's down 70% from the same period last year. So um, look, I, I think one thing that's also always important to mention when you're talking about these types of stats is we're only able to really understand this because of the unique qualities of blockchain, right? The, the ability to see transactions sort of to have that traceability that transparency so it's 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 great to be able to sort of understand these things um and um and really be able to sort of measure uh against last year's numbers yeah in the report you you point to sort of two enforcement actions as at least partly responsible for the lull you have the arrest of uh avraham eisenberg who manipulated the prices on mango markets um he was arrested in december but you also point to sanctions placed on tornado cash last year um, is it getting harder for these attackers to hack these protocols or move illicit funds around and get away with it? Or is this is this pressure from law enforcement temporary? Look, I, I think the, I think the bottom line is like a couple a couple things to that. One, I think we definitely look at this as a temporary reprieve. Um, I don't think anyone is naive enough to think that these numbers will necessarily hold long term. Um, but the reality is that, um, you know, because really we're one or two Ronin style attacks away from 
2022 numbers, right? Because the size of these attacks matter. And when you have a $600 million attack like the Ronin Bridge from last year, you get those numbers up very, very quickly. So this could very well be a temporary reprieve. But I think um, there are a number of factors that we can point to, and you started to get into a few of them. First of all, we've seen actual prosecutions in the space now. Um, and the mango markets is the mango markets is a great example. So when you actually you know arrest individuals um, and when you when you build prosecutions, that's certainly a deterrent. And then the other piece is that regulatory piece that you're that you that you mentioned. You know, it's it's really not only tornado cash, which was a tool used by North Korea and other cyber criminals to launder hacked funds, um, but we've also seen other sanctions actions. This week, we saw the U.S. Treasury Department. Um, sanctioned uh, individuals and entities related to North Korea's cyber program, including for cryptocurrency addresses, which according to TRM, um, you know, uh, were, were received about $28 million um, in, in funds over the course of time. So the reality is we're seeing more regulatory and enforcement actions, um, and it's very possible that those are having an impact as well. You know, you've mentioned that we didn't have a Ronin size hack so far this year, but for the facts, for the hacks that have happened in, in Q1, what sorts of protocols or customers that are most at risk or, or saw the most attacks uh, in Q1? Yeah, I, look, I think we continue to see sort of a focus on the DeFi ecosystem, you know, bridges, uh, protocols, um, and that's a combination of factors. One, there's a lot of liquidity typically in those places, um, and then also just sort of, you know, weak or, or really nascent cyber controls. Um, I will say that I think what we're seeing at TRM is is working with partners to build out, harden those cyber defenses, which certainly could be a factor in sort of why hacks are down. I think another trend we're seeing in 2023 is the, re the hackers returning funds. Um, and that's kind of a really interesting development um, as well. And I, I think you can point to a couple things. I think one, um, malicious hackers are having a harder and harder time off-ramping funds. Um, and ultimately sort of like imagine a world where you're just looking around trying to find exits. And when you can't, I think you're more likely to capitulate. And I think we've seen some of that. But then there also is this sort of growth of the white hat hacker. Um, and when you talk about hardening cyber controls, that becomes a really important part of the crypto ecosystem, right? You know, people who are out there testing cyber controls and bounties uh, are, are their payment for these types of activity. So I think you're seeing folks who are hacking with the intent of returning funds but you're also seeing sort of more malicious attacks where they're just having trouble finding off ramps. Final question for me, at the end of this report, TRM makes a prediction that this slowdown isn't going to last. And I mean, and to be fair, this is only one quarter that we're looking at here, but what are you looking out for that could sort of turn the tide or turn the pace of hacks back around? Um, what's the longer term trend that you're watching for? Yeah, I think the reality is that like the, the, the numbers are skewed by these very, very large attacks. If you look at the top 10, um, uh, hacks from 2022 that made up the lion's share of the total numbers. So the reality is that um, we could look for trends here, and I think there are things to definitely point to, but um, you know, one or two big hacks and you're back to those 2022 numbers. I think what, what's really critical, and I go back to this time and time again, is that it's so critical for that DeFi ecosystem as we build, as a community, to make sure that we're building in cyber controls, to harden those cyber defenses against these types of attacks. Because TRM, working with law enforcement, like we're very good at tracing and tracking the funds. And law enforcement has gotten very good at seizing back those funds. But the reality is we have to stop these attacks from happening in the first place. And that really comes down to cyber defense. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we're back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.